Hello, my name's Mark and I'm from GK Tutor. Now I'm here with Practical Machinist to go into the second section of my Back to Basics series. So we're gonna look at some information you need to know before you start programming your CNC machines. So let's take a look at the Cartesian coordinate system. Now I've mentioned this briefly on the last one. So this is the way the axes are sat in our machine, usually. Now if we have an horizontal meal, for example, they may change, but this is generally the axes that we tend to see on CNC machines where Y minus and X minus and Z minus come down to the bottom left corner. Now on a lathe, it looks more like this. And we may have more axes on a lathe also. Our tail stock there can be swapped out for a second op collet, and that can move in on a B axis. And our tool turret there at the top, that can move backwards and forwards on a Y axis also. And mill turns have even more axes. So that's the basic axes and movement directions we're gonna probably see on your average lathe. Now, cutter compensation. If we program to the shape of the part, we have the diameter of the tool to worry about. So the part is always going to be the radius of the tool under size. So how do we get around that without programming bigger all the way around our parts? Well, for that we use cutter compensation. So if we apply cutter compensation, as you can see from this slide, our cutter moves to the outside of the part. So the cutting edge is cutting the program shape and the center line of the tool is cutting around the outside. And we don't need to calculate this because we can use this. So this is G41, G42, and there's also G43, it controls the height. So by using cutter compensation, we can tell the machine how big our cutter is and it automatically offsets it to produce the part the correct size when we program to the shape of the drawing. So there's three different ways we can do this. We can either set it as with a P value or an X value. And in there we would put the radius of the cutter. And we can do this inside the G code program. Or some machines allow us just to say G42 in this example. And that would take the information straight from the tool table where we've added information about the diameter of the cutter there. So it's gonna use our tool geometry for wherever we've given it to offset that cutter to produce our part. Now when we're machining, Another thing that confuses some people, especially when they're starting out, is the difference between absolute and incremental programming. So just briefly, the way it works is absolute, we define by G90 in our programs. Absolute uh, takes all dimensions from the same point. So as you can see here, our, our datum is on the bottom left corner. And every time we move the cutter, we would give it a dimension from that datum. It never moves. Now with incremental programming, we use G91 to select this within G code. It changes the datum every time we move the cutter. It doesn't, but that's a way to look at it. So we, every time we program the next position of the cutter, we program it from its previous position. So in this case, we're moving 80 millimeters to the right. And then our next move, if we wanna continue going that direction, would be 20, not 100. Where if it's absolute, it would be 100, because it's all coming from the same point. So that's the difference between incremental and absolute. Um, a lot of people only program in absolute, and that's fine, but incremental is really useful and can really help with some of the more trickier maths problems, etc. It has its uses, and I recommend playing with it a lot. Okay, so this is a standard list of G-codes. Now, this is the ones that tend to be shared across most machines. Now, a lot of machine manufacturers use custom G-codes, custom M-codes, to do things that their machine does different to your standard. So... This is a standard list of G-codes, which you'll find on most mills and lathes. And here's a standard list of M-codes. It does the same thing. These generally don't change, but you might see like M119, for example, um, being a pallet change on one machine, or it could be um, a more complex flood coolant system on another machine. So M-codes and G-codes can change outside the standard, depending on the machine manufacturer. And that's why G-code often changes, and it makes it difficult to teach. But um, we keep to the standards and you learn G-code programming. When you switch to a new machine, it's got some different M codes or different G-codes. It's very easy to pick up on what they are when you already know how to program with standard G-codes. Now, 
Talking of standard G codes, we use multiple repetitive cycles quite a lot. So this helps us speed up our workflow. We can use roughing cycles, for example, to remove a lot of material without writing the line of code for each cut. So multiple repetitive cycles are really useful, um, especially turning. And we also have can cycles, which shouldn't be confused with the repetitive cycles. So can cycles, um, are things like drilling cycles, boring cycles, things like that. Now these need to be cancelled with a G80 once they're done, otherwise the machine still thinks we're in that mode and it's gonna behave a bit weird. So that's some basic introductions into G-Code. And if you want to know more, I have a website, gcodetutor.com, where I have a range of paid and free courses where you'll learn all sorts of stuff from G-Code programming, computer aid design, machine shop maths, health and safety, tooling. I've got lots of stuff over there. So it's worth popping over and having a look. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at gcodetutor.